Well, I joined the Army in 1964. Uh, I come from the state of Maryland, and uh, I was 17. I joined in January of 64, but as you know, that in November of 63 is when uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. I was working at a grocery store, and I came in that afternoon from delivering groceries. So when I got back into the store, the boss, it was just the two of them, right? The boss says, he says, shh. And then I watched a little TV he had sitting up there, and they were just announcing that the president had been assassinated down in Texas. After a few days of going through all of that, um, one of my friends was talking about, let's join the Army. And so we just got into that mode, so I kept pushing my parents to let me, because they had to sign for me being I was 17. And I joined, I was to become an instrument, and after basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I moved to Fort Devens, Massachusetts. I spent 19 months there, and then in 1965, they alerted us that we were going someplace, and, and uh, they were changing our patch. So we changed our, our, our division from 5th Division, which we was there at Massachusetts, and put Big Red 1 on. From there, we uh, shipped our stuff out after going through some training. We flew out to Oakland, California. We got on a ship, the General Blatchford, and 22 days later, we arrived in Vietnam. They put us from the ship onto LSTs, and we were standing there with our rifles in front of us, real tight, shoulder to shoulder. And we was facing that part where when they hit the beach, the deal comes down. And they had told us when we got to the beach, they wanted us to start running and yelling. We was almost to the beach and we started looking at each other saying, you have any ammo? No. Do you have any ammo? No. Has anybody got any ammo? And then the platoon sergeant says, he says, I have some. So they gave the platoon sergeant and the platoon leader some ammo, but the rest of us was no ammo. And we had our bayonets fixed. But anyway, the, the thing went down and most of us just closed their eyes and, and just took off running behind us, started yelling and screaming and charging. They said, once everybody was out there, hit the beach and get down in the prone. But about the time we started running, the first division band was there. And they started da 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 da. So you take it from there and figure out how we felt landing in a place that we knew was gonna be a war zone with no bullets and, and then the bands waiting for us. In November of 1965, we got into our second reaction. I'm talking about where you had a major force fighting a major force in the jungle. And most of us ran out of ammunition within the uh, first hour, the battalion was ambushed. And then the way we survived was to crawl from body to body and, and people didn't need the ammunition anymore and grab ammunition from where you could. And that's how m most people survived the whole day. I always told people my thing was I wasn't as scared during the action as afterwards. Because then you started realizing how close you come that day, you know? Yeah, you, you reacted, but you wouldn't sit there thinking about it. You just fired and moved and did your thing and it was afterwards. It was more scary after a firefight than it was. You know, because then you started thinking about it. The way I look at it, once you've been shot at, if you survive it and you come back, everybody knows what that's like, that, that feeling of almost dying. When I got back, none of the animosity of the Vietnam War had started yet. And it really didn't get started bad until the 68 Tet Offensive when we started a lot of body bags coming on. And those guys caught hell as far as being spit on and, you know, everybody was protesting. No matter where you went as an Army person, you were afraid somebody, even, even if you weren't coming back from Vietnam, if you wore a uniform and you were somewhere in public, you were subject to, you know, somebody say something. And I've had that happen, but that was later, and I didn't think much about that. I didn't really care anyway. When I got back, it was, I mean, it was still acceptable guy returning from the war, you know, and it, it was a good feeling. One of the things that pushed me over the edge on re-enlisting, because at first I wasn't keen on re-enlisting, and I only had a couple months left. I went to my hometown of Maryland, and wore my uniform with that sergeant stripes on and that CIB, and I felt proud, you know? Well then, I went to the first bar to get a drink, and they wouldn't serve me. You know, where, where I went, they wouldn't serve me a drink. And I got pissed off. I thought, here I am out here, you know, I've done my thing, and you know, when I got back, I just went straight to the re guy, and I says, I'm ready to re-enlist. He says, I figured you'd be back, because he tried to talk to me when I first got there. 